Back in April 2020, I decided to make a video that, unbeknownst to me, would change the course of my channel forever. A valiant quest to take the scrambled 2019 reveal teaser for Breath of the Wild 2, now known as Tears of the Kingdom, and try to piece together a chronological order of events, as well as a general story direction. It is to this day one of my best performing videos I've ever made, and the reception I got back then was beyond anything I could have imagined. So did my predictions end up being correct? New. Not really, no. But in hindsight, I think it's safe to say that it was an impossible task to begin with. A lot can change in four years, and while I wouldn't call it unrecognizable, it is clear that the 2019 footage was a lot more conceptual than many of us had perhaps anticipated. Of course, it's not unusual for a Zelda game, or any game for that matter, to go through some major changes during its development cycle, especially when it comes to early promotional material. I mean, just look at Breath of the Wild's reveal as a somewhat recent example. Not only does Hyrule's layout look considerably different from the one we actually ended up exploring, but that whole sequence of Link being chased by a guardian ended up being nothing more than a proof of concept. A pre-rendered cinematic that establishes a general setting and atmosphere to get people excited, but does not actually show up in the game itself. Now, in the case of Tears of the Kingdom, the differences between the early promotion and the final game aren't nearly as drastic, which does make sense. Not only did it have the luxury of reusing the same engine and assets, but the game as a whole was born from leftover ideas for DLC, and so the Zelda team likely had a better sense of direction from the get-go compared to its predecessor. Despite all the differences between the teaser footage and the opening segment seen in the final game, you can tell that a lot of the core ingredients were already there back in 2019. The return of Ganondorf, the zone icon connections, Link's magic arm, the rising Hyrule castle, even the idea that something bad was gonna happen to Princess Zelda. Looking back now, it's pretty interesting to see how these early concepts have changed since. That's why for today's video, I thought it would be fun to revisit the 2019 teaser and see how it compares to the final product. We'll cover the most notable differences, theorize why they could have been changed, and see if there's any traces of these early concepts left in the game itself. To make things a bit more interesting, we're also going to create a new version of the 2019 teaser using only footage and assets from Tears of the Kingdom's final build. A teaser remake, if you will. This means we're going to tackle every shot from the teaser in order of appearance and see if we can find a suitable replacement for each one. And of course, at the very end, I'm gonna present to you the final result. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. To start off, I want to quickly point out that some of the shots from Tears of the Kingdom's promotional material were obviously made for cinematic purposes, and were never meant to be part of the game to begin with. These types of shots were custom made and staged by Nintendo just to get a more exciting view of the action. They also did this in more recent trailers, like for example, this sequence right here never shows up in the final game either. It's simply a shot of Link skydiving without any HUD elements visible and using a custom camera placement which isn't achievable in the game under normal circumstances. As such, I think it's only fair that for the creation of our own teaser, I will be allowed to use custom camera angles of my own. After all, some of the shots from the 2019 teaser simply don't exist in Tears of the Kingdom. But by using a free cam, we have a bit more control of the action and sometimes we can get a pretty close match. So let's get started. The teaser kicks off with a close-up of the green zonai particles, which constantly change shape and morph into various symbols or glyphs. Now, these particles or zonai glyphs usually don't look or behave like this in the game itself. In most cases, they are simplified 2D sprites with some kind of wavy effect thrown on top, just to give the illusion of movement, likely to save up on memory. That said, the original animation did survive and has been reused for the title screen. You can even match up some of the particles and see that the way they move is close to identical, so it's likely the same animation they made back in 2019. I initially thought this effect was just a pre-rendered 2D overlay or something, but as it turns out, these particles are actually full 3D and are likely running in-engine, which is pretty awesome, but it does make recreating the 2019 shot a bit more difficult since, uh, for technical reasons I'm not gonna bore you with, you cannot simply extract a particle system from the game's files like you would do any conventional 3D object, which I have done plenty of times in the past. Besides that, the particles keep resetting and jump all over the place as the title sequence plays out, which normally you don't see because the camera moves and changes positions with it, but when you view it from a static angle, you can see what I mean. So for this shot, I had to resort to some After Effects trickery. I used the reverse green screen effect to isolate the particles from my recordings, captured some green mist from inside one of the shrines to use as a backdrop, added some blur and camera movement, and there you go. It's not perfect by any means, but it's workable. 
Going back to the teaser, we then fade into an establishing shot of the imprisoning chamber, with Ganondorf's sealed corpse and the green spiraling energy as the main focal point. Overall, the imprisoning chamber still looks pretty similar in Tears of the Kingdom. The platform in the middle, the spikes protruding from the walls, the pyramid-like structure on the ceiling, it's all still here. The differences mostly lie in the smaller details. The platform or altar Ganondorf stands on used to look more like a natural rock formation, but in the final build it's a circular, man-made structure. The spikes on the walls now have Zonai writings on them, as opposed to the white paint-like decoration seen in the teaser, and the pyramid on the ceiling also received a bit of an overhaul in terms of its design and shape, but that's about the extent of it. In general, I do think the room looks better in the final build. It maintains the dark and creepy atmosphere from the teaser, while at the same time adding that little extra detail to make it look less like a natural cave and more like a place that was constructed for a specific purpose. The only thing that's unfortunate is that the imprisoning chamber cannot be explored properly in-game. At least not until Ganondorf has been set free, at which point most of the room's architecture has completely collapsed. Luckily, we can get a much better view of the layout using the free cam. For example, the staircase and bridge leading to the altar, which were not visible in the teaser and are barely visible during gameplay because of the limited view and the lighting. Also worth noting is that there's two pieces of concept art for this room in the art book. One of the entrance and stairway, and one of the altar Ganondorf stands on. As you can see, the altar already looks more like the one we see in game as opposed to the one from the teaser. Meaning the teaser was almost certainly created before the concept art as opposed to the other way around. As for trying to recreate this moment, there is an establishing shot in the opening sequence that looks somewhat similar to the one from the teaser. However, unfortunately the camera remains static for only about a second or two and then moves backwards to reveal Link and Zelda. Which is not gonna work unless I slow it down since the original shot is about 5 seconds long. So instead I just use the free cam to make my own custom shot. And get used to me saying that. Next we cut to a close-up of Zelda's torch which illuminates a cave painting of Ganondorf on horseback. And I think it's safe to say that these paintings are likely the precursor to the mural that depicts the history of the imprisoning war. I'm not sure why they removed the horse because we do see Ganondorf leading his army into combat on horseback in one of the memories. Or I guess a unicorn from the looks of it. The shot that comes the closest to the one in the teaser is the one right here so we'll just go with that one. Next up we have a top-down view of the energy spiral and this sequence does not show up in the game whatsoever. So once again we're gonna have to resort to the free cam for this one. The only notable difference is the way the particles look between the two versions. In the teaser they are much more plentiful, detailed and feature some of that same movement seen in the opening shot. But since we never actually get close to the spiral during gameplay I understand why they toned it down. Again probably for the sake of performance. We then move on to what is probably the shot with the highest amount of cut content in the entire teaser. And first and foremost is of course Zelda's unusual animal mount. While the creature itself did make it into the game as a sort of side quest and lore exposition, its use as a mode of transport below Hyrule Castle has been completely removed. While I do think it's a shame because it did look pretty awesome in the teaser, I do understand why they changed it. The implementation just doesn't work anymore knowing what we know now about the area below the castle. During the opening segment, Link and Zelda are essentially already in the final stretch of their little cave expedition, so most of their journey happens off screen. That said, the game does give us a pretty good idea of the type of secret passages, rooms and corridors that exist below the castle. And well, it's not exactly practical for a rhino sized animal. I mean good luck trying to get this beast through these narrow doorways or up and down these staircases. The second and in my opinion biggest change in this shot and the teaser as a whole for that matter is the architecture. Now I'm gonna stand my ground on this and say I think it was a mistake to change the Zonai architecture from that which we were familiar with to whatever this is supposed to be. I mean what was so wrong with the original Zonai stonework that they felt compelled to change the one thing we knew about them? And it's not like the original architecture was retconned or overwritten either. It still exists alongside the new stonework. Don't get me wrong it's not that I have a problem with adding new, previously unseen Zonai architecture to the mix. In fact, the teaser is filled with both familiar structures we know from the previous game, as well as brand new ones like this wall, for example, or that impressive looking bridge or the amazing entrance we get a brief glimpse of. But at least these were modeled after the same style seen in Breath of the Wild, unlike the new stonework which may as well have come from a completely different race altogether. And you know, maybe that's what they were going for, but I still think having two completely different architectural styles attributed to the same race is just needlessly confusing and makes the whole Zonai lore feel a bit inconsistent. But that's just my opinion of course. Also there's a rat there, but we'll 
we'll talk about that shortly. It goes without saying that I can't really make a faithful recreation of this sequence, at least not right now. There's just too many elements missing, so until someone creates a mod that allows you to spawn the animal down here and make it rideable, we'll just have to do with a more boring shot of Link and Zelda traversing on foot instead. Next we have a shot of Link and Zelda overlooking the imprisoning chamber and this one matches pretty well with the shot I mentioned earlier, which is the moment right before you trigger the awakening cutscene. The only thing that doesn't match is the camera movement which in the teaser is slowly panning upwards. On top of that there's also a dialogue box that gets in the way, so once again, free cam. We then transition to a shot of Link, Zelda and the packing animal standing close to a body of water. And there's a very similar looking area in the game as well, in fact it's the very first room you enter once you're in control of Link. It even has a name, the Forgotten Spring. There's not that much going on in this room except for a brief cutscene that triggers halfway across, but that cutscene doesn't feature a camera angle like the one in the teaser. In other words, another candidate for the free cam. Next we have our little rodent friend over here who was definitely done dirty. They just completely wrote him out of the story for no discernible reason. In fact there's not even any rats in the game at all. Same goes for cats but that's besides the point. Anyway, rest in peace my friend, your sacrifice to the malice will not be forgotten. We then cut to the impressive looking Zonai Bridge I mentioned earlier. In the teaser it seems to serve as a sort of bottleneck that forces Link and Zelda to leave the animal behind. But since there is no animal in the final game, this sequence was scrapped altogether. That said, there is still a remnant of this bridge present in the game. A little callback if you will. When you explore this area later on, you'll come across the remains of a bridge which has seemingly collapsed. Not only that, but this room leads straight into the stairway where the game started. So even though this part of Link and Zelda's journey isn't shown in game, we can at least deduce that they did in fact cross this bridge moments before the opening segment. It even has some green glowing spots on the outer walls, very similar to those giant luminous crystals seen in the teaser shot. Granted, it doesn't look nearly as impressive as it did in the teaser, but at least there's something left in the game that calls back to it, which I can appreciate. It's also worth noting that the bridge and chamber as we see it here probably looked very different when Link and Zelda crossed it. Other parts of this cave system show that when the castle rose up, a lot of the architecture in this area was heavily damaged and covered in gloom. Staircases crumbled, giant pillars were knocked over, the whole place basically fell apart, so we can assume that the bridge was also still intact before this happened. Unfortunately, we are aren't able to see these sections in their original, more pristine state because they don't exist. The entire intro takes place in its own self-contained map, essentially a duplicate of the area we get to explore later. During the opening segment the game doesn't allow you to backtrack to where you came from, or more specifically Zelda doesn't allow it because, well, as you can see there's nothing there. The map just stops. So for this one I decided to just show a part of the bridge that's still intact since we don't have a whole lot to work with. Next up we see Zelda investigating something with her torch followed by her surprised reaction. There's a couple of different moments I could use for this one since Zelda does quite a bit of detective work during the intro. There's the Zonai text on a pillar that's been toppled over, a carving of a dragon she investigates and takes pictures of, a Zonai statue which also draws her attention for a while, and of course we have the mural which gets the biggest reaction out of her by far. In my original video about the 2019 teaser I proposed that the close up of the torch and wall paintings and the shot of Zelda's reaction are probably sequential, and I still suspect that that's what they were going for. So since we previously used this shot for the close-up, I think it's only fitting that we use a shot from that same cutscene. Coming up we have four shots in quick succession which I'm basically gonna tackle as one. It starts with an establishing shot of Ganondorf and the green energy, followed up by three brief close-ups, two of Ganondorf and one of Raru's arm. For the first shot there are two moments in the awakening cutscene that convey a somewhat similar vibe. However, one has Link and Zelda in the frame, so that doesn't work, and the other is a little too close compared to the teaser. Not only that, but the upward camera movement is missing in both. This may seem like nitpicks and it's probably an editor thing, but the way the sequence plays out in the teaser was done very deliberately. The first shot is just far enough away that the identity of the corpse is still a bit difficult to determine with 100% certainty, especially on a first viewing. This is then purposely followed up by some brief close-ups that slowly reveal more and more information. You know, the clothing, the Gerudo jewelry, the mysterious hand and the malice seeping through the holes in his chest. The only thing it doesn't show is Ganondorf's face, that part is saved for later. It's basically meant to build tension and a sense of mystery for the viewer, and to tie the whole thing together into one continuous sequence, all four shots feature that same upward camera movement. In other words, it's time for some more of that sweet delicious free cam. We follow up with a full body shot of Ganondorf which is not only very brief but has a lot of shaky cam indicating some sort of earthquake. 
I'm pretty sure this is an early depiction of the moment the cave starts collapsing, which has been changed quite a bit in the actual game. Here, the seal has already been broken at that point and Raru's arm is no longer latched onto Ganondorf's chest. But in the teaser, this isn't the case. I think the Zelda team knew from the get-go that they wanted Ganondorf to do something to trigger the collapse, but they hadn't worked out the exact sequence of events yet, which is something we'll see a lot more of moving forward, where the general idea is already there, but the details behind how exactly this will play out clearly hadn't been decided yet. Now, instead of using my own camera angle and artificially adding shaky cam in post, I think we can just use this shot instead, since it's basically conveying the same thing. From this moment on, things continue to move at a very rapid pace, with most shots only lasting a second or less. We start with Link's arm absorbing the green energy, and I think this is another example of an early, preconceived idea that hadn't been worked out yet, but was still included as a sort of hint for the audience. In this case, as a hint to Link's new powers. The most telling part is the fact that Link's arm looks completely fine. No burns, no tissue damage from the gloom attack, and no bracelet either. So maybe the gloom attack simply wasn't conceptualized yet, and instead they just showed some green energy going into Link's right arm without further context. For the final game, they seem to have split this moment up into two separate events. One where Link gets the gloom treatment, and one where the green energy settles into his arm during the aftermath. As for which shot to use for my own teaser, I'm leaning more towards the gloom attack, because at least here Link is not only conscious, but he's standing in almost the exact same pose, clutching his right arm with his left. So let's go with that one. We then cut to Ganondorf's gloom hitting the ceiling, and this one is pretty straightforward. I already mentioned that the design of the ceiling has been changed, and there's a very similar sequence in the Awakening cutscene we can use. So yeah, that's about it. Next up is a very short close-up of Link and Zelda's hands reaching out to each other. In my video from 2020 I proposed that this was depicting Link's failed attempt to reach out and catch Zelda right as she is about to fall into the abyss. However, some people had issues with that because according to them, there aren't any gloom particles visible in this shot, and so they opted that this was a completely unrelated sequence that had nothing to do with Zelda's fall. One example given was a sequence where Link helped Zelda climb up a ledge or something. Even back then I didn't agree with this because it's pretty clear that most of the gloom particles reside above the ledge, not below it. Plus it's a close-up, so who's to say there aren't any particles right outside the frame? Naturally, the shot we see here didn't even make it into the game, so we'll probably never know for sure what it was supposed to depict. But I'm gonna stick to my guns and say that this is most likely a precursor to this moment. Moving on, we have a brief shot of that gorgeous looking entrance, which I still think was supposed to be the entrance to the imprisoning chamber, or at the very least the final stairway or hallway leading into it. I think this design was perfect, especially with that big boar statue on top of the door. It just screams Ganon's lair, I love it. But as mentioned before, sadly it didn't make it in, and what we got instead was not up to par in my opinion. The actual doorway to the imprisoning chamber is very bland and uninteresting. It looks just like any other doorway. The only entrance in this general area that looks somewhat impressive is the other doorway inside the mural chamber, which I guess is the next best thing I can use for my own teaser. Of course it doesn't lead to the imprisoning chamber, in fact it leads in the opposite direction, but I mean, I don't exactly have a whole lot of options. Next we have a shot of Raru saving Link mid-fall, and this one is quite similar to what we see in the Awakening cutscene. The only real difference is that we don't visually see Raru grabbing onto Link like we see it in the teaser. Here this happens just out of frame, and in the next shot Link is already dangling in the air. But we can still use this part and have it make sense. Next in line we have another sequence that was completely removed. That brief flash on the wall showing the moment of Ganondorf's imprisonment. And honestly, I don't really have a problem with its removal. It worked for the teaser because at the time we didn't know who the green arm belonged to. But in the actual game we learn almost immediately who sealed him away. And we even get to see it happen in a later memory. I do still want to include something in its place, so for this one I'll just show a brief flash of that memory. The next two shots are easy, since we have an almost identical sequence in the final game. A close-up of the floor crumbling below Zelda's feet, followed by her going over the edge. While the camera angles are not one for one, it is, in essence, still the same event, just from a different point of view. The same cannot be said about the next two shots though. There's not really anything in the game that matches these two moments. Ganondorf's hand is the first thing that starts moving, but when this happens, Zelda is not in the frame. Initially I wanted to just show a close-up of Ganondorf's hand using the free cam, but he doesn't move until the awakening cutscene. And this cutscene is pre-rendered, meaning I have zero control over the camera during this part. That twitching movement the hand makes is kind of the main focal point since it signifies Ganondorf's first signs of life, you know, before all hell breaks loose. So the most logical option is to just show a close-up of the hand moving. 
Luckily, I do have this entire cutscene upscaled to 4K, courtesy of Conrad from the Commonwealth Realm. This means I can easily zoom in on Ganondorf's right hand without losing too much image quality. Zelda not being in the frame is not that big of a deal. In fact, one difference I haven't mentioned up until now is that originally, it was Link who was holding the torch throughout the entire confrontation with Ganondorf on the altar, from the moment they approached the corpse to Zelda's fall. Every shot inside the imprisoning chamber, except for this one. So it's always been a bit of a strange outlier especially considering that in the very next shot, which I assume was supposed to take place shortly after, she doesn't have the torch anymore. In the finalized cutscene, they corrected this. Now Zelda is the one holding it from beginning to end, freeing up Link's hands to use the Master Sword, which I'm pretty sure is the reason why they changed it to begin with. As for Zelda's turnaround shot, I was always under the impression that this took place right before she falls, but this never happens during the cutscene. At no point does she ever turn around like that and she has no reason to, since she is always facing in the direction of Ganondorf. She doesn't try to run back across the bridge or anything like that, so it only makes sense that they would remove the shot altogether. It's a bit of a shame because it did mirror a moment from Ocarina of Time, but oh well. Now there are plenty of shots of Zelda reacting to Ganondorf's presence and actions, so we'll just use one of these moments moments as a replacement. Next we have the one shot that has remained virtually unchanged for the final build, and for good reason because it was such an iconic part of the teaser. There is a very slight difference in the animation, but it's negligible at best. And besides that, the only notable change is the lighting, which is a little darker compared to the 2019 shot. Oh, and I guess they found the original neck cracking sound effect a little too violent. And finally, we conclude with the rising Hyrule Castle. Now, obviously, the shot we see here is not represented in the finished game. In fact, in the teaser, we don't even got to see what really happens to the castle. Hence why there were so many theories about the castle taking off into space, or growing legs and marching across Hyrule like a certain Studio Ghibli movie. In the game, we never get an establishing shot of Hyrule like this when the castle starts to move. Instead, the event is shown up close from multiple angles. Only after it's already suspended do we get a wide shot of the castle from a distance, which is still a lot closer than the one from the teaser. Again, the cutscene from the game is pre-rendered, so there's no way for me to show this event happening from a distance. As such, I made a custom shot of the castle as seen from the Great Plateau, which then transitions into the actual in-game cutscene when the castle starts to rise up. Not exactly accurate, but it's serviceable. And with that, we have reached the end of the 2019 teaser. All except the announcement at the very end, but I got that one covered as well. No worries. Now, before I showcase the new and, well, probably not improved version of the teaser, let me quickly address one final change which I kind of forgot about while writing the script, so I'm just gonna do it now. The Secret Stones, aka the dumbest name for a magical artifact since the Hoe of Destruction. I think it's safe to say that the stones probably weren't thought of yet when they made the teaser back in 2019. Some may think that they were and Nintendo was simply keeping the secret stones, uh, well, a secret. But given the track record of all the other shots that were drastically changed or outright removed, I think the more logical option is that the idea simply didn't exist yet. Which is why in 2019 Ganondorf's head jewel was still a regular gemstone like the one he had in previous titles. And why Raru's arm also didn't feature a secret stone yet. I'm aware that Nintendo sometimes leaves stuff out of their promotional material to keep certain plot points under wraps, but given how early this teaser was presented and how long the game ended up being in development, I think we can chalk this up to a concept that came into existence later down the line. In general, I think that during the teaser's creation, the Zelda team only had a very rough idea of where they wanted to take this story, as well as the other content they wanted to include. Things like the Sky Islands and the Depths may have already been on the table, but how exactly they would look and function was probably still up for consideration. Anyway, I think it's time to showcase the final result. Do keep in mind that I am using the original audio, so sometimes the sound effects may not always align perfectly with what's happening on screen. There's not really much I can do about that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the 2019 teaser recreated in Tears of the Kingdom. And a little bit of After Effects.
So what do you think? Did I manage to capture the magic of the original or did I completely butcher it beyond recognition? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video in general, let me know that as well and, you know, maybe I can do more of these types of videos in the future. After all, we have a bunch more footage to work with, as well as the patents Nintendo issued and the concept art from the art book. I want to give a well-deserved shout out to Max Last Breath, who is single-handedly responsible for creating the amazing free cam I used for this video, as well as Gossip Geist, who not only instigated the free cam project, but was also kind enough to keep me up to date on the progress and gave me early access to it. Suffice to say, this video would not have been possible without them. Finally, a big shout out to Claire Hegarty, Aaron, and the rest of my amazing Patreons and channel members. Your support continues to make this channel possible. Thank you for watching, that is all for now, and I hope to see you all next time. <laughs>